next guest is a writer, director, and New York Times bestselling author who you know from his work on comedies such as Trainwreck, This is 40, and The King of Staten Island. His book, Sicker in the Head, More Conversations About Life and Comedy, is available now, and his latest film, The Bubble, is streaming on Netflix. Let's take a look. Um, a lot of you have been asking about flirting. Yes, it happens. Um, physical touch is, of course, off the table. Um, so what I would recommend is making sweet eyes at each other. Um, if you're wondering what that looks like, that would be... <laughs> Are there any questions? Amazing. Let's have some fun. Please welcome back to the show our good friend Judd Apatow, everybody. It's so good to be here. It's so great to have you here in person. We've Zoomed a couple times over the last years. Thank yes. you for making time for me in your home. I enjoyed that. This is, uh, you've also enjoyed historically, you love talking to comedians. This is I something do. you did as a kid. I did, when I was 14, I started interviewing comedians. And you're still doing it today. I, this is the new book. Second of this uh, title. Second of the series. Series, yes. And uh, it was very emotional, because a lot of people, you know, they were at home yep. during the pandemic, so the interviews got very uh, deep. You, uh, Amber Ruffin, who's a writer on this show, yes. Jimmy Kimmel, uh, yeah. John Mulaney, Pete Davidson. Yeah. Um, I checked, I'm not in here. <laughs> I was also at home. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that today. Yeah. When you realized you were coming here, yeah, is that yeah. what jogged it? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a soft cover version where I add more interviews. Oh, wow. So we, you know, maybe we could do a little piece of it now. All right, great. Because everybody wants to make the soft cover version. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, this, we'll just do a little bit of the. Okay, end. great. Okay. Uh, so what I'm interested in, because you're so funny, is like what really painful, <laughs> traumatic thing happened to you as a child <laughs> that made you want to express yourself in comedy? I, I don't want to be in your book. Okay. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> hey, this is very nice yeah. and true. Uh, because you did it for the first book as well. All the money is going to yes. charity. All the money Which is, is really uh, impressive. Thanks. How does that, when you, how does it come about? When do you make the decision like this is gonna be for charity? Well, Dave Eggers has a charity called 826, which provides uh, free tutoring and literacy programs for kids. And he, he said, you know, maybe we can come up with something for charity. And I thought, well, I guess you take all the money yeah. And then it made a lot of money. Yeah. And then someone said to me, like, you could have given him just like a little bit of it. Oh, right. So I didn't know I could have kept it all. <laughs> yeah. And then there was another book. I'm like, I don't think I could switch the deal now. Yeah. And so now they get all the money. I think you can give away like 4%. And people are like, wow, And that still so counts cool. as two charity. Exactly. Yeah. So it would be a bummer if right now I was saying, like, now the proceeds of the first book went to charity. Yeah. And this is cool. This one all goes to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why. So you were in a, you were you were definitely cornered yourself. Yes, I'm yeah. screwed for life. Charity. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is really exciting. And uh, a rarity for us. I had your uh, beautiful wife, uh, Leslie Mann, was here yesterday. Yes. And you guys are coming up on 25 years right. of marriage. 25 years. And according to, you brought something for us. Yeah. It, there was maybe a, maybe a time where people didn't think you were going to make it. The public yeah. at large didn't think you were going to make it. There were some years. bumps along the road. I'm sorry, this was, uh, this was from Star Magazine. Yeah, Star Magazine. Marriage drama. I know. Look how angry I look there. Uh, yeah, you are not. She's not happy with me at all. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to read the, the quote or do you want me to do it? You can do it, it's painful. She, she may have been seen in the movie Big Daddy, but insiders tell Star Leslie Mann is not at all into dad bods. <laughs> and with hubby Judd Apatow's fading figure, the spark is dimming on her 21 year marriage. I mean, I know you're a loyal yeah. Star reader, so you probably picked this up. You were probably taken aback. Yeah, it's like my favorite magazine and then like they're, <laughs> Tearing me yeah. apart. You, know? you are a life. You don't even get it at the supermarket. It comes to your house. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was. There was an article about dad bods somewhere, and there was describing the phenomena of the dad bod. And I swear to God, I clicked on it, and the photo they used was of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's heartbreaking. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it also said still, oh, the, you're going on. still the train wreck director isn't the only one to blame when it comes to their rocky relationship, adds the source. They had a source. Oh, man. He says watching Leslie's love scenes with other men disgusts him. I can't believe Maud is the source. <laughs> I know. Your daughter, <laughs> your daughter, Maud. She Sweet, like, 10 grand. 10, 10 grand, grand yeah, she there. got 10 grand out of that, yeah. But, uh, but now, of course, the true thing is, you're often responsible for these love scenes, including yes. in the bubble. And we were here yeah. talking last night, she, uh, her ex-husband in the film is played by David Duchovny. You wrote a love scene for the two of them. Yes. So when you're sitting down and you're writing a love scene with your wife and David Duchovny, what's that? What's, what's driving that? Well, I figure then she'll accept my dad bod. Yeah. And I'll accept her sex with David Duchovny. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it is. It's, sort of, it's sort of like, if you accept this, yeah. I will give you this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've written a lot of love scenes for her that I've had to direct. And, yeah. Uh, I think it's a fetish. Yeah, maybe that's it. Like, if you could, like, write scenes yeah. with your wife, like, yeah. hey, you want to make out with Owen Wilson? <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> they're also, and I will say, I love your films, but often the sex scenes are very jarring. They don't serve the plot at no, all. No, yeah. No. <laughs> Go on for Even so films long. she's not, the ones she's yeah. not in, she yeah. shows up for like one weird sex scene. We have the dailies at home, we're watching every day. <laughs> we, I talked because, uh, so the bubble, you uh, not just direct Leslie, you also uh, direct your daughter Iris. Yeah. I mean, it's great, I would assume, to be with your family. What's it like to direct them? I mean, I like uh, just being around them, yeah. you know, because they're your family, so you yeah. like them more than other people. Yep. You know? <laughs> it means you're doing it right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so it, and it was fun to get out of the house and do something during yeah. the pandemic, you know, because it's, uh, it's a movie about making a movie in a bubble during the pandemic that's a dinosaur action movie. Yep. It's a really weird premise. Yes. I have to say, some critics were thrown. <laughs> Like, why did you do this? And what they don't get is they're watching it wrong. First of all, when you watch it, it's a, you, it, cause it's a weird movie. It is weird. It stars Fred Armisen. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, you should be high. Okay. You should be a little drunk. Yeah. You should watch it like 10 minutes after you've had sex. Okay, great. And you should be on scissor. <laughs> On scissor. Yeah, yeah. You should be, you should be on scissor. Yes. Or, this is, uh, Are this, is this, I mean, uh, is this all on the poster? Yeah, these exactly. Instructions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a medicine. You have to do this yeah. before watching the movie or you won't know what's going but on. But you, so, but this is also the, mo you were making the movie the way the movie was being made because, of course, you were yeah. also making it during a time where you had yeah. to make it within a bubble. So you we were had... making a movie about how it's only idiots want to make a movie during the pandemic, but we were making a movie during the pandemic. It was like a meta, meta, hypocritical nightmare. Yeah, and that really uh, wonderful clip about the sort of health and safety protocols. Yeah. I imagine you had someone like that for real on your set. Yeah, no, we would have like that guy give the speech very seriously, and he'd go, "Thank you." And then we go, action, and then that guy would mock him. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been like, what, I, what am I doing this for? Yeah, yeah. Um, you've made movies both ways. You've made uh, films come out in theaters, and then you find out in real time how it's doing mm -hmm. in the box office. Um, obviously, uh, your movies have historically done a great uh, deal of ticket sales in the box office. Yeah. So what is it like when you have a film on Netflix? How are well, you finding out? You just don't know. Yeah. Like, you have no idea how many people watch. Like, people text things, I'm watching in Denmark, and you just don't know what's going on. Yeah. And they put out information every once in a while. Yeah. Like, they'll say, uh, well, one, people watch 1.9 million minutes of Red Notice, <laughs> which makes you wonder, did 1.9 million people watch Red Notice? Or did 1.9 people watch one minute of Red Notice? <laughs> yeah. So you don't know. And then they put up these like top tens yeah. trending. You I made know, a top 10 here. Yeah, this we, is very exciting. Uh, so there you go. Um, yeah. There, uh, Number five, there's the bubble yeah. right there. Congratulations. Yeah. So we worked yeah. so, so it's Shrek. Yeah, that's a new Shrek. Is, is it cake? Is it cake? That's and a game show. And then the bubble. Yeah. So like we worked for like so hard yeah. and we couldn't beat the mystery of cake. Yeah. So I don't know, is that good? I think the is problem is like, if you all, if you also were high, a little bit drunk and on Caesarep, that cake show, you might be like, I might be right up your alley. <laughs> That's, That's the so problem. Popular. That's the problem. You like made a film at the wrong time. It came yeah, out at the yeah, wrong yeah. time. Um, you, uh, uh, you also have made, uh, over the course of your career, some fantastic documentaries. And I'm really excited about this. You 
have a documentary uh, for HBO about George Carlin. Yes, in, and in May it's coming out. That, you know, he's a fantastic comedian. And I feel like obviously as time passes, less and less people are maybe yeah. familiar with his work. Um, you knew his work a great deal uh, when he was alive. And, and what do you, what, what is one of the things you found going back and looking at his material? Well, what was weird is anytime something happens in the world, no matter what it is, he trends because he has the best stand-up bit on the topic. Yeah, a modern topic. Anything. Yeah. Viruses, big pharma, abortion, the government, you know, like everything he's got the bit and it just starts trending. And I only, I think I only saw him once. He was at Igby's in LA working on a new set and he would sit there and like memorize it like a play. And I, all I remember, and I don't remember the jokes, is he said to the audience, there are certain things you're not allowed to make jokes about and that's what I'm gonna do right now. <laughs> and just went at, whatever you could imagine, as the worst topic he did that night. Being as familiar as you were with his work, was it also an education to go back to the old stuff? Oh yeah, because yeah. Uh, you know he was kind of corny in the 60s, and then suddenly he's like, I wanna be edgy, and then he grew a beard, and he became the edgiest guy, and then he got kind of soft again, and did like, place for my stuff, and then he saw Sam Kinison, he saw Sam Kennison and he thought, I don't want to be soft compared to this guy. And then he tried to like outdo Sam Kennison for the rest of his career. That's fantastic. I can't wait to see that. And it's always so great to see you. Thank you so much for yeah, being here, you guys. To see you. Judd Apatow, The Bubble, streaming on Netflix, Sicker in the Head is available now.